Hi, my name is Jack Buckley. At age 14, I decided to follow my dream by creating and releasing a feature film that was shown in theaters and inspired kids around the globe. There are many kids who waste their childhood on things that won't bring them a good life, but I believe in us getting out there and following our dreams while we still have a chance. Now is the time to create. Welcome to The Jack Buckley Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Jack Buckley Show, the show dedicated to inspiring young creators to follow their dreams. Today, we're talking with Nick McCamish, an 18-year-old YouTuber and filmmaker who's amassed over 300,000 subscribers between all of his channels. So let's go talk to him. So Nick, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Hey, guys. My name is Nick McCamish. I am a 18, almost 19-year-old animator slash YouTuber. Uh, I run a company called Verinda Studios. We make animation videos for people that want to buy them, and uh, also YouTube. Yeah, and Nick is also my great personal friend, so glad to have you on the show. Um, glad yeah, to be let's, here. Let's get straight into it. So you've done YouTube for a while now, so what was your starting point on YouTube? My starting point actually started when uh, I was just scrolling through YouTube and I was looking at all these, uh, these animation videos. And they were getting a lot of views. And I'm like, I could do better than that and maybe even get a fraction of the views and the potential money that, uh, that would come in. And so that's where, that's where it really started. And then uh, about a year later or so, I really started to pursue that. Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, you do a lot of Pac-Man videos and that's what most of your channels are devoted to. So when did you start making Pac-Man videos and what drove you to do that? I believe that was about two years ago two, maybe two and a half years ago. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but uh, I started with my channel, Verinda Studios, in which I released one Pac-Man video, uh, which now has almost 2 million views, I think. One, 1. 1.5, maybe million views at the moment. But uh, that's that's where it, that was my first channel. And uh, I've, I've uploaded a few videos since then on that channel, but most of my, most of my videos have been uploaded to other various Pac-Man channels, um, yeah. Pac-Man related. You know, you have all these big channels that are Pac-Man related. Um, so what drew you specifically to making Pac-Man videos as opposed to any other type of video game adaptation or any sort of Pac-Man videos in general? What well, mostly uh, my mindset was what can I do to get the most money with the least amount of work? And Pac-Man is a very easy character to animate. and at the time was getting a ton of views on other particular channels so i thought if i can mimic those channels enough do the research and how to crack the code of youtube i can get a fraction of what they had and i got more so in general how do you create these rapid subscriber counts and channel growth well i think the big thing is you need to find what is what is relevant on youtube what is actually growing what is getting the views and if you can crack the code of YouTube, put your videos in with the flow, um, you'll get a fraction of the, the wave that's going through. Yeah. And if it's a big wave, you get a big amount of subscribers and views. Yeah. Um, and on another level, do you have any tips for someone who's maybe making original content or things that aren't as algorithmically out there where people would be always looking for them what would you tell people who are just doing more creative work like like short films uh that is a much harder uh area on youtube to get into if you're uh making those videos to get money um i have not seen many youtube channels that create original short films do very well um and so that's why my recommendation is to see what is going on because otherwise if you're going for money then you're wasting your time yeah. But obviously, YouTube isn't always about the money. YouTube is also about being having an outlet to express your creativity. Um, but if if it is for money purposes, uh, I wouldn't recommend um, anything besides what is being relevant. However, uh, to answer your question, for tips on uh, how they can grow their channel if it is not in with the with the flow, what's being relevant. Um, I would say uh, just good thumbnails. These are, this is the, the principles that I always follow, is uh, you need to have a, a good hook, like a thumbnails, a tag, or tags in the video. And then also you need to aim for the watch time. Um, and so then you might 
after after uploading a lot of videos, you might start to create your niche group if there is a niche for what you're making. And uh, just making sure you have that watch time that keeps them hooked, makes them come back um, as subscribers. That is extremely important. For sure. And, you know, you just talked about thumbnails. So you have a really big knack for thumbnails, knowing what <laughs> thumbnails sell on YouTube. So what's your biggest tip for creating thumbnails that draw on viewers? And I've, I've said this a lot about other things in this interview, but really just seeing what works. Uh, what I do is I look at videos similar to what I'm wanting to create. And then I try to mimic what seems to be getting the most amount of views. Um, Cause that's, that's really how you can see what, what grabs people. But also just making it very clear like what, what you want people to look at in the thumbnail. Cause thumbnails are very small. And uh, making sure that it stands out, whatever you want the focus of the thumbnail to be is extremely vital. Definitely, and other than thumbnails on YouTube, what would you say is the most important thing to making a successful channel? Other than things like thumbnails and tags, what maybe in the content itself is the most important thing to keeping viewers hooked? Oh, this is a, this is a good question. So uh, the most important could be subjective, but I will give you one particular tip. Make sure that the, in the very, the very first 30 seconds of the video, the audience knows exactly what is going to happen. And, uh, so, and don't, don't drag on saying, please subscribe or all that, all that kind of jazz. Make sure you get straight to the point because people's attention spans are very, very, very short. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that happens all the time on YouTube. And <laughs> the ones that really get a lot of views are the ones that, for instance, people who have really grown a lot, like Mr. Beast, he always puts a preface for the video at the start of the video. So I think that's, that's a really good tip because that's really what keeps audiences focused. Yeah, Mr. Beast is a fantastic example. Um, and also what he does is he puts a hook, or he puts something in the video that, that hooks you on for anticipation of what's going to happen later. You know, uh, he, he's, he's, he's amazing with the YouTube algorithm. So on a lot of his videos, he does those challenges, last to uh, let go of a pole, or last to stop hanging from a pole wins uh, $10,000 or something like that. Uh, that gives you anticipation and you, you just you just have to see who wins, right? And so you end up watching the entire video, right. uh, which is brilliant. Right, so. and that's how you, on YouTube, viewer retention is a really big, big deal in terms of getting people to keep watching your videos. So it really is. What's, other than that, what's your biggest tip for gaining that viewer retention for people to keep watch all the way through? I think there's a, there's a, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, and just observing what, what other channels are doing. Great, high energy stuff tends to do very well. Um, but it, it, it's very niche related. Um, if I'm doing a cover of a song, uh, one of the important things is that I have a good voice. Uh, otherwise people aren't gonna keep watching if I have a terrible voice. Uh, just having high quality content. Don't, if you're, if you're really wanting a video to do very well, don't settle for the easy way. And I'm not, I'm not really one to speak on this because I've always, tried to find the cheapest way with, with, all, with a lot of my other channels. But what you're want, going to want to do is to try to give them something that they have never seen before or something that will really, um, that, they, that, they, that they really want to see. Just finding that thing, um, maybe thinking uh, for yourself, what would I really want to watch? Um, that's something that I do a lot. Yeah, definitely. And so, what was your reason for splitting your focus between five separate channels? Because you have a bunch of different Pac-Man channels, you have some other channels you're kind of starting out, and then you have your Verenda Studios channel. So what was the reason for splitting those all up? So I see a lot of channels, and, uh, and I, I don't know if this was a wise idea, splitting up the channels, but I was thinking, okay, if I see a lot of channels, they try to upload every day, and they're, they're, they're getting 25,000 views a day, which would be nice and bad, but like if you're going for the millions of views, that is terrible, um, which I was going for. And uh, if, if they're, and it seems because they kept uploading videos and the subscribers, because of the overflow of content, the, the subscribers that were already subscribed to them would stop watching them. And they would be what is known as dead subscribers. I am highly against dead subscribers um, when, when, uh, when starting out or, or trying, to, trying to build a channel. Um, and so I was afraid of the dead subscribers and it's the overflow of content, people not going to want to watch it. But I see, okay, if I just change things up a little bit between the channels, um, it's just like it's just like all the other Pac-Man channels, they're not going to know that they all belong to me. Um, 
and uh, I will I will get just as many views on all these different channels as just Matt Garold or uh, Antonio Palmucci. Yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Those are the big guys in the pack. Big guys. The big guys. Big guys. <laughs> By the way, um, <laughs> um, so just in general, um, what's the biggest long-term goal in life? Your end result, the thing you're really you're trying to get at by doing all this business stuff. What's that? What's that goal? I want to get to a point where I pass on most of the work to other people and I just do a fraction of the work or simply maintaining the channels um, as kind of the director, giving me more time for other projects, other businesses that I want to start. I want to be a business manager. Um, just just, just the, 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 uh, the Elon Musk of many different businesses, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I'm really going for. He's got his hands in everything. <laughs> exactly. With, with exactly. Exactly. Gotcha. Um, and so let's segue into talking about your short films. You know, you make a lot of short films. So when did you begin making short films? When did that all start? I was a wee little lad. I was a child. I, uh, I was about nine, I think, eight to nine. I might've been seven actually, probably seven to eight when I, when I would make my first short films. I would use Windows Paint on the old Windows machine and, uh, um, and the old Windows Movie Maker, which was better than the, which is better than the Windows Movie Maker now, by the way. Um, I would use that. I would make frame by frame animations, uh, 2D animations, by the way. They weren't 3D at the time. They were, they were 2D, obviously, because it's Windows Paint. Um, that's where I started. Um, that's a lot of nostalgia right there. <laughs> Just thinking back on all the all the good times. Yeah, so you started over 10 years ago making these short films. So what do you wish you knew that you know now when you started making short films? I wish that I, that I really had the heart to listen to uh, what other people were saying about the films. Listening to advice, finding people that would critique me and knowing that when I've had my eyes focused on these films, I can't see the bigger picture oftentimes. And there's been so many films that I was so confident were going to do well and then then kind of flopped because I didn't listen to people that actually knew what they were doing. I thought I knew what I was doing and it did to a certain point, but getting those fresh eyes is, is vital for success, I believe. Definitely, yeah. And so on that note, um, you've made a bunch of short films. You've had 10 years of experience doing this. So what's your favorite short film? My favorite short film. Uh, it's it's probably a split between my most recent one and uh, uh, which I which I sold to Antonio Palmucci, by the way. Uh, it's a, it's a dinosaur one, Pac Man Maze. Uh, it's got a dinosaur in it, which is one of the reasons I like it. Uh, and it just looks nice. I made it in two days. It was nice. Uh, it's split between that one, The Last Dot, which is an award. It's won a it won an award at the Highbridge Film Festival, the high school award, because uh, I was in high school and I made it. And uh, also Valorum, which is more of a personal film to me. It's about a robot who was who's abused by his master and his heart was only wanting to please his master. And so he did everything he can to be good enough, but in the end it still wasn't enough. And he realized then that his identity was not tied up in what other people thought of him. Um, and so, uh, that one probably is my favorite one, the one. Yeah, and by the way, everybody, um, go check out the link in the description all, every, all the Do time. <laughs> uh, we, we always put the links of the channels in the description. So go check out Verenda Studios channel. Go watch um, Vlorm, Last Dot. Go check out that, show them some love. Uh, so anyway, so uh, <laughs> on short films, you know, you also have a big interest in game design and virtual reality. So how would you say those two things feed into you making animations in short films? How you think, how you work? Well, it's all entertainment based, right? Uh, and also growing up my entire life, I did school on the computer. Um, I was on the computer all the time doing animation, uh, playing games, watching YouTube. I didn't watch YouTube when I was younger. I started watching YouTube when I was around 16, 15, 16. Um, but the question is, how does, that, how does that all tie in? I think it's because it's all entertainment. Um, and uh, I'm a huge uh, entertainment fan. I love virtual reality. Uh, I love playing games. Sometimes I, I get kind of bored now, but uh, uh, I like playing games. I like uh, uh, making games. Um, I haven't done a lot of that yet, but I really want to branch out into that. And that's kind of like my next my next big goal when it, when it comes to uh, uh, next company to start up would probably be a virtual reality gaming channel. 
Yeah. Uh, or gaming, gaming company. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I don't know if that answered your question, but yeah. No, that definitely didn't. Uh, you know, also, if there's one area of your filmmaking repertoire you'd like to expand on, what would it be? Uh, I would say I want to get really good at sculpting. Um, I, I dabbled into that a, a few months ago, and it was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. Um, but if you don't know what sculpting is, sculpting is you, you just take an object, and it's just like you're sculpting in real life. Uh, you would digitally sculpt, add, remove, uh, like kind of mash things together to create a character, a sculpt of something. Uh, it, it's it's used for generally for more organic characters. Uh, and I prior to that, I'd have to like individually add like the, the different vertices and the faces and extrude it and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, definitely sculpting is the way to go for organic characters. Yeah. So why do you love filmmaking? Well, I don't like filmmaking as much anymore due to repetitive workflows that I've had to do for my uh, for my channels. Um, but I'm going to be going more towards complicated or more complicated and more uh, artistic stuff, which I'm excited about uh, in the in the coming uh, few months. But I would say the thing, especially when I was younger, that I that I most uh, was most thrilled about uh, animation was the creativity that I can make whatever I wanted to make and I had no restriction at all. Yeah. And I just thought that was the coolest thing in the entire world and uh, I still love it. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's, that's awesome. And um, so, you know, you know, you gave tips for when you were starting out, but in general, what would you give filmmakers? What, what tip would you give filmmakers who are just starting out in their filmmaking journey? Oh, this is a this is a good question, and I sort of already sort of answered it when I, when I said about uh, finding finding people to critique it. But I would even add on to that: just do it. You know, a lot of people they're they're waiting till they go to college, and they're, they're waiting all these years till they have a good camera. I don't know. You just start simple, and you just start doing it, and keep doing it, and that's how you improve: is to keep doing it. Um, I'm better than a lot of graduates out of college and I never went to college and I'm, I'm 18 and I'm still better than a lot of these people at animation not because I'm just better it's because I've worked hard and uh and I and I just kept doing it and kept doing it and I did get critiques from other people and uh that's that's why I'm as good as I am right now yeah yeah definitely and so you know you've talked about your short film studio for the studios so what is the most exciting thing coming up maybe with Verenda Studios or filmmaking in general that you're really excited about? So, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't want to give away too much because a lot of these channels I don't necessarily want to blast to the entire world because I don't want them to try to imitate what I'm doing. Um, but I am starting a, uh, one of the things I can share is I'm starting a 2D animation channel like Odd Ones Out. So it's going to be me telling a story about my life or about a, specific, a particular topic and uh, going to have animation on top of it. Not just normal animation, but hilarious animation. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited about that. It's going to be hilarious. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. So you use Blender for your uh, animations, all the animations that you do. So when did you start using Blender? I started using Blender when I was 11 years old. So this was about three or four years after I started doing 2D animation. Uh, I begged my dad to install Blender so I can learn 3D animation. And I convinced him that, uh, that I would learn it because I need to create models for games for programming because he was a big programmer and he didn't think that animation was a, uh, a possible career. Um, and so I convinced him that I, could, I can learn programming and uh, use uh, Blender to uh, to make the models for the games. My dad sees the story a little bit differently. He thought that he was his idea, but um, I'm right, obviously. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how I started. Um, and I've been learning ever since. Yeah, and so other than the fact that Blender is a free program, what do you use or what do you love about using Blender over other programs? Um, I'm used to it. That's the biggest thing. Uh, the second biggest thing is that it's the fastest growing software. Uh, from from what I understand, um, it's got it's got developers that uh, are constantly developing it. A lot of other animation softwares, what happens is they update it every year, so that when people uh, people want to rebuy the package because Blender's free and 
they can update it instantly um, without without having to worry about uh, revenue loss. Um, and that's probably one of the other biggest things is the updates. It's constantly updating. Um, well, and it's also open source, so people can update it themselves if they have enough drive. Exactly, right. exactly. It's such a modular program. So if, have you, if anybody doesn't know, um, I actually made the movie, uh, which he stars in, which he stars in as well, uh, in Blender. So it's it's a great program if you're looking to pursue animation in general. So, um, you no, know, in terms of animation itself, if a kid is looking for a career in animation, what would be your biggest advice to them? Um, I would advise that they, uh, first of all, that they that they just go out and do it. Secondly, find people that will critique the work. And third is to just try new things. Uh, don't be afraid to try new things. Stop sticking to the stuff that you already know, because um, that's how you grow. Doing stuff that you're uncomfortable with, and it, the results might look terrible at first, but the more you keep doing it, the more better you get. The more the results are going to look fantastic. <laughs> I definitely had so. Um, just in general, are there any resources that helped you grow? Family, friends, or also other platforms? YouTube, that is a big one. If you want to learn Blender uh, or just anything else in general, like business, uh, self-help videos, like just just watch videos uh, for educational purposes. If you just binge videos on YouTube because they're fun, you'll end up being unproductive, which I've fallen into that trap a lot. Uh, so so if, you, if you're gonna spend a lot of time on YouTube, I would recommend doing stuff for educational purposes, um, for self-improvement. Um, but yeah, just watch videos on how to improve your animation skills uh, and other skills that you want to improve on. They got a lot of really, really um, useful information. Yeah, definitely. And so you also talk a lot about, you know, having a mentor, someone who you look up to in life. So who have been some of your personal mentors to get you to the place you are today? Um, yes, mentors are extremely important. Not this, I mean, this also applies for uh, animation skills or business skills or skills that you want to learn. But also, it's it's extremely vital for your growth as a person. So I have a mentor. His name is Christian Postel. Um, he's been my mentor for a few years, and has been a huge blessing to me. He's the kind of guy that I share literally everything with, and he keeps me accountable for things. He's uh, he's just been a, a great guy in my life, and really is 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 one of those people that look at me, see how I need to improve, and point it out to me. Uh, and just, just to be there when I need to talk and to encourage me. So get a mentor. I think that is one of the, the best things that you can do. Somebody that you can really trust. Don't just pick some random guy. Find a guy that's really uh, really where you want to be in yeah. however many years. And so maybe for someone who's who's older, someone, someone who's maybe more like your age, maybe they want to become a mentor for someone younger than for someone who they really love. So what would be your biggest advice to someone who's wanting to become a mentor for someone that they really want to help out and someone they admire? I would say uh, to focus on your own self-improvement. And uh, and then when you feel like you're in a good enough place where you you can mentor somebody in a particular area, you know, just reach out to them and ask them, hey, so uh, do, you, do you want some advice on a particular area? Or just, just be around them. And if they're really hungry for growth, they'll want to cling on to you. That sounds weird. <laughs> Let's get that out of there. Let's get that out. Let's get that out. Uh, um, but yeah, just being, just, just being there for them, being around them, uh, they'll, they'll want to, uh, they'll, if, if they're really wanting growth, then they'll, they'll seek after that in you. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so what would be your advice in general for kids trying to chase their dreams? Because this show is all about inspiring young creators to chase their dreams. So what would be your biggest, biggest inspiration or tip for someone who's looking to follow their dreams? I would say my biggest tip is to create a game plan. Because a lot of people, they can have dreams, but they don't have that plan. Okay, this is what I'm going to do to get to that place. So I'd say just write things down. Where do I want to be in a few years? And then just go for it. Don't let anything stop you. Unless it's like a really, really good thing to stop you. Don't let anything stop you. Uh, and just go for it. And there, that, that phrase is really accurate. Normally I won't say this, but I think Disney was right in a lot of, in a lot of ways when they say, to just reach for your dreams and you can be anything you want to be. And I don't think you 
but like realistically speaking, you can do a whole lot. You've got a hard working mentality. By 18, you've got several successful YouTube channels. So how did you find that mentality and why is it so important? Well, to be honest with you, I can't say that I'm always in that mentality of being a hard worker. Um, it's a fight every day because my natural my natural tendency is to want to do things a comfortable way uh, and doing hard work isn't always comfortable and most of the time not most of the time a lot of the time I don't enjoy my work uh, which is one of the reasons why I'm my, my dream is to kind of pass on the work to other people and I just head manage it because that's what I enjoy doing is I like to manage but yeah just developing a schedule uh, is really important because a lot of times you can just float throughout the day you don't want to float throughout the day you want to be intentional with your time um, so yeah, just writing a schedule can be very important if you have the tendency to float. Uh, just, I, I, you know, I, I didn't want to hear this as a kid, but writing stuff down, even on pen and paper, um, I write things down on my phone, um, that can kind of clear my head, uh, which can be good. Um, and also just keeping track of the time you spend um, has been useful to make sure that I'm not uh, uh, lolling, gagging, and dawdling around. So YouTube isn't the only thing you do, you're also a very skilled entrepreneur. In fact, that's one of the main reasons your channels are so successful. So why do you love business as a whole? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I think that unlike nine to five job, um, business opens up wide opportunity to where you can make basically as much money as you're smart enough and work hard enough to get, and fortunate enough to get. Uh, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I never really wanted to work a nine to five job because I knew that I was restricted to however many hours, nine to five, I could work and uh, whatever that job might be. There's not much ways to build more money on top of that unless you uh, are already have enough money to, uh, to get a lot of money from investing. So, um, so your goal at this point in your business is to, to get that money as a foundation. So what's, what's the main drive behind getting the money? What's the reason to have that, that good foundation for your future life? So uh, the reason why um, I want uh, money is security, first of all. Um, I want money to be able to open doors to opportunities that I want to do. And the third reason is, uh, so I'm a Christian, and uh, I believe that the money I make is not actually mine. It is money that God has given me because nothing that I have is mine. I live fully for God. And so the money that I have, I use as a resource to do whatever the will of God might be, uh, wherever God is leading me. So maybe God, with the money that I have, might lead me to a missions trip to, uh, to a different country, or maybe to donate, or maybe to start a ministry. Uh, something like that, or maybe just to bless me with uh, a VR company, you know, a startup VR company, you know, uh, it could be, it could be anything. And uh, that's, that's another reason why I want money. And I feel that um, as a person that has been given so much that I cannot just sit around with the blessings that I have and do nothing. Just like the story about a guy that has had, I was given 10 uh, talents, which was a currency back in, in the day. Um, he he invested and got a hundred talents. And there's one guy that just took one of the one of the talents and hit it, and then brought it back when the the master asked for it. And nothing, there was nothing different with it. He didn't invest it. The least he could do is invest it. And so, what I want to do with what God has given me is to make the most out of it. Yeah, definitely. And so, if you could give kids one piece of advice about the business and entrepreneurial world, what would it be? Um, that's a good question. I would say, uh, think ahead. Uh, take time. No, no, actually, no, I'm going to change my answer. I would say research. Uh, just fill your head with a lot of, uh, with a lot of good knowledge. Like, like a lot of the most successful people in the world, they read a lot of books. And I can also add to that is it doesn't have to be books. It could be YouTube videos because you're just learning. Be a constant learner. Uh, and when you have that mentality of this, I just need to keep learning and keep learning, your mind gets sharper and sharper, but also your, your perception on the particular topic that you're researching gets sharper and sharper. And, uh, and you also get more motivated, just like me hanging around other people that are Christian, excuse me, Christians, getting more fired up about my calling 
uh, as a Christian, just like that, watching videos about investing and about business will fire you up for the topic of business. So I would say research. Yeah, definitely.